Hi, I'm Dr. Noel Palmer with Mary's Medicinals. Smoking cannabis is probably what most people think of when they think about ingesting the plant. This is perpetuated by pulp culture. It's perpetuated by the news and it's even perpetuated by our own industry. But smoking is not for everybody. Fortunately, there are a number of different ways to administer cannabinoids to the human body. While smoking generally is not associated with any sort of medicine, there are good reasons to inhale cannabinoids. The effects are instantaneous, so through smoking or vaporizing the plant, a patient can reach the desired effects and then stop dosing. Additionally, some cannabinoids need to be activated by heat, so smoking or vaporizing is important in these cases. But smoking as a delivery method isn't clean. You're inhaling the plant and you're also inhaling a lot of undesirable byproducts too. Vaporizing can solve that problem though. Vaporizers provide a clean and safe delivery, but all inhalation methods have low bioavailability. The amount of cannabinoids that make it into your system at most is 30 to 50 percent. Most of it is exhaled or destroyed. Sublingual, Latin for under the tongue, is a method that takes advantage of the mucosal membrane and the epithelium tissue, or tissue whose job it is to secrete, absorb, or transport solutes through the cells and the high concentration of capillaries beneath the tongue. The primary advantage of this delivery method is that it bypasses the body's first pass metabolism. That is, it doesn't first move through the liver, so whether you are 100 pounds and your body tends to metabolize cannabinoids quickly, or you're 250 pounds and metabolize slower, the dosage will hit your bloodstream the same. When accurately dosed in capsules, oral ingestion can be a very clean and effective delivery method. But because the effects aren't felt for anywhere between 30 minutes and many hours, patients don't get the immediate biofeedback to tell them when they've reached the proper dosage level. This is a particular problem when patients are medicating with cannabis high in THC. The psychoactive effects of high when too much cannabis is ingested could be very uncomfortable. Cannabinoids absorbed through the intestine are subject to the body's first pass metabolism. They will be filtered through the liver before entering the bloodstream, so proper dosing will vary greatly between patients. Transdermal delivery is a relatively new technology to the cannabis sciences, though it's widely used elsewhere in the medical industry with medicines such as fentanyl and nicotine patches. Transdermal is not to be confused with topical. Transdermal patches contain a carrier agent that delivers the cannabinoids through the skin and impacts the entire body. A topical agent will only affect the body locally. Transdermal delivery also bypasses the first pass metabolism and has the additional benefit of delivering cannabinoids slowly over a larger span of time than some of these other methods. Rectal administration of cannabis is an option for those patients that are not ambulatory. Cannabis delivered through a suppository route has a fast onset and high bioavailability. In addition, the rectal route bypasses around two-thirds of the first-pass metabolism. Most of the cannabinoids are absorbed directly into the bloodstream. If you're interested in learning more about the medical benefits of cannabis, I encourage you to visit marysmedicinals.com and other great resources from organizations like Americans for Safe Access and Norm.